I'm from Versailles, Ohio. I'm a farmer in Hancock County. And we farm 2,500 acres, corn, beans, soybeans, rotation. I farm uh, 660 acres down there in Dark County. Precision gets really great products out there. What is the latest and greatest new technology? Th this is an event where you get to get your hands dirty. There's been a tremendous amount of work put into this event. Really helps us to educate ourselves. It's hands on. Hands on. Very interesting, worth my time up here to help me make a better decision. It's really good to get out into the field instead of just listening to somebody and watching a PowerPoint. It benefits me to come down here and talk to the guys that are actually doing it. Top-notch guys and we enjoy working with them and, and they, they have always done a great job for us and uh, that's why we're here. You know, highly recommended. You know, they know what they're talking about. Today we were at our field day and mainly we focused on the planter, looking at the uh, different aspects of uh, what farmers need to look at in the field to basically improve their yields and their stands as far as corn and soybeans. So we're looking at, you know, we have uh, out in the field here, we have uh, depth studies, residue management studies, uh, we also did uh, close, different closing systems and different, uh, different pieces of equipment on the planter that would enhance things in the field for them. dual cast. We have the beta from Harvest International here. Those are a dimple cast. We go back to a uh, Dawn Curve Tine. We have dual rubbers here. So we're going to run this. We have three tillage zones set up. We have a what we're going to consider a, a conventional till, followed by a, a uh, like a stale seed bed, and then a no-till. When they're a little bit tighter like this, they're getting them small rocks like this, they might get stuck and caught in. Just the flowability of trash debris and rocks. And so I'm, I'm making that adjustment in my depth here. I have an airbag controlling the force in which it takes to get in the ground, right? If I need more pressure, I'm able to add more pressure. This planter had eight rows of the standard closing wheel system from Furrow Force. Then it had eight rows of what we called the beta version this year, like this with the straight spike. And then we took the other eight rows, depending on what we were doing on replicating our plots. They were uh, casts, they were Yetter Poly Twisters, they were Don Curve Tines. So we have replicated plots of about 150 acres of replicated plots across everything. There are certain rows of the planter guys that we've, we've messed with, done different settings, different things. You know, we're in conventional tillage, you know, you go up here and look, you know, someone had a uh, one of the row cleaners and not four in conventional till. You know, that's probably not going to happen. So what I recommend you do is dig. You see, you guys see something, you have questions, you know, get one of us over there, you know, holler at us, whatever it works. See what you're seeing, ask questions, and we'll make our way from the conventional side over to the minimum till to the no-till. Here we have our baby corn plots. Uh, so Tanner and these guys at Precision Agri Services put these in. Um, a few staggered plantings over the last few weeks. Um, it's pretty nice especially because you look out in front of you here and there's just some little spikes and, and uh, that are starting to come out that they planted I believe last Friday. So we'll get out and we're, we're going to take some uh, spike counts in there as well. We dug these up side by side. I've got one, two, three leaf collars on this guy. He's getting pretty close to a fourth one, but he's not there yet. So he's one leaf collar behind his neighbor. He came up out of the ground later. 
So he's gonna get less nutrients, less moisture, less sunlight every day of his life. He's never gonna be able to catch up. So how many of these we have is pretty important. We wanna to start to identify that. I know that some of you guys here, you chop your corn, you feed it. I'm gonna make the argument that this is a bigger deal for you and has a higher cost in terms of loss for you than if you take the combine through it. Because if you lose this ear, you lose feed value, you gotta pay for it to gain it back. There's a lot of decisions that really go into that. Number one, how much weight do I need to simply get those opening discs to penetrate to depth? Number two, I'm looking at how much extra weight do I have on my gauge wheels? Do I have too much extra weight on my gauge wheels that's causing some sidewall compaction and not allowing those roots to grow laterally, even vertically down into the soil? Okay, groups of two. So the first group, we're gonna put on the second row right here. So second row in from the sign. But we wanna make sure we get a good even spread and a good even advantage for everyone. So we put some on the outside, moved them from the inside to the outside, outside to the inside so that we got a little bit of everything, okay? And what we tested was three, three different ones, three different ones for your kind of your standard, standard system back there with your lever notch. And we also tested that furrow force, the one you guys got to look at out there. And what we could have done, what would have been great, is if we could have came through here instead of leaving it nice and fluffy with the field cultivator, we should have packed it to where we got a little bit of air in there, but not too much to where we lose it, okay? And because we have good conditions when we planted, we did a nice job of waiting when it was good and dry. How do we think this guy did? But remember, we also had our little pad on the back here. But we don't want to take all our air out. We don't want to make it like that brick in there, right? We're not brick makers, that's not our job. We want to make sure we get some air in there because if we come anaerobic, we can't do anything. If you look out in that plot there, whenever you're over there, you're going to see these strips of yellow corn and that's right where these windrows were and that's because we had so much moisture there that it's really locking everything down so that guy keeps going down and we come into our 72 to 96 look how far he is behind right he's gonna board a lot of kernels he's got not a whole lot there yet right there's a whole lot missing there He's probably gonna board a lot of kernels up top and look at the stock diameter compared to what we had down there, right? Big difference. We created a nice flat spot about four inches about where that turbo till ran and it really did a bad job. And it really it hindered our ability to get to water down here, right? It's gonna dry out up here a lot faster. Our goal for the attendees here is more education, something they can bring back home to their operation and it's all about educating that customer and then they can make decisions from there.